we just had to call their names out today. Without whom this project would not have happened. And so uh, we added it in spite of Ms. Tiffany's schedule. That's right. We said, bear with us because it's important that we honor the people that we're here today. So we want to thank the believers of the project. So to the TTV team, Jeff Heisler, Satya Morthy, Stephanie Pearson, Doreen Duke, Aretha Estep, Sheila, Karen Kearney, Steve Lodi, Charles Penny, Michael Gray, Jim Rushford, Tom Bonapani, and Malik Aziz, thank you for your Network, 
We feel like we made that happen. Under Mayor Fenty, we were awarded new funds for the first pre-development dollars for the Beacon Center. And then the actual approval came from the Housing Production Trust Fund when Vincent Gray was the mayor of the city. With the help of our councilwoman all along the way, Mayor Bowers Bowser, who is now our mayor. Yeah. So which added two more years, more design, Sharif, and $4 million to the project. There were many hearings throughout this process, and many win blue t-shirts at every hearing. Yeah. The immediate <laughs> construction of this project has happened under the Bowser administration. She has been in support of this project through all of her council years, and I'm happy to see that she will be here when it is finally completed. Yes. Uh, when we needed additional funds for the church component, we were awarded New Markets tax credits from the other arm of TCP. But they required leverage dollars, and that's when the United Methodist Development Fund, Fund stepped into the breach for us. They've been a major player in allowing us to leverage their funds in order to have the New Markets tax credits. What I'm about to say will 
will likely ring true for our brothers and sisters working in healthcare, education, prison reform, immigration, voting rights, social justice, and as well to so many of our partners uh, here today and not able to be here today because they're working in, in, in the public sector uh, that have helped make this possible. Uh, as a mission-directed nonprofit developer, we face the task of hours, days, weeks, months of effort that go into one celebration like today. We push through that and we're right back at it every other day because the stakes are so high. Successes like this change lives and you simply cannot put a price on that. Across the country, the demand for decent, safe, and affordable housing has never been more pronounced, while the resources to produce and preserve continues to shrink. If this were offset by commensurate increases in worker wages so people could afford uh, more rent, that'd be great. Anyone think that's happening? We are indeed fortunate to have a mayor and council who are wise to this and continue pushing the envelope on resourcing and collaboration to compensate, yes. which is one reason we're able to stand here today. The chief reason that we're standing here today, uh, Pastor Daniels. Hey, Hazel said we've been working on this for 10, or they've been working on this for 10 years, we, we for five. I think Pastor Daniels has been pursuing this vision since before Zion Links. <laughs> He is first and foremost a man of faith, but also considerable determination. <laughs> and there is no such thing as an insurmountable, insurmountable obstacle between pastor and fulfilling a righteous mission. <laughs> Hazel and Jackie also touched on the number of people that that go into making something like this possible. And nothing is more emblematic of the hope and promise of better days to come than what surrounds us today. We're proud to be a partner in this magnificent venture and grateful to all who helped make that possible. Paraphrase Dr. King, the arc of the moral universe is long, but with commitment and resolve from all of us, it bends toward justice. Well, good morning, Brightwood. Good morning. Uh, my name is Brandon Todd, and I represent Ward 4 on the Council of the District of Columbia. And this is a wonderful day in Ward 4, and a wonderful day for Upper Georgia Avenue, and a wonderful day for the Brightwood community. So let's hear a round of applause. Good morning uh, to our mayor, Mayor Muriel Bowser, Hazel Broadnecks, president of the Emory Beacon of Light, and the entire Emory Beacon of Light team, uh, members of the mayor's administration, Todd Lee, Polly Donaldson, and Tyrone Garrett, uh, our advisory neighborhood commissioner, Candace Tiana Nelson, who represents this single member district. I saw the president of the Brightwood Citizens Association here this morning. Uh, thank you, Dr. Joseph W. Daniels, Jr. and the entire faith community. And every one of our development and construction partners, because without them, we wouldn't be here today. And I would also like to thank my chief of staff, Cheryl Newman, whose singular job on this project was to make sure that Hazel and Pastor were happy at all times, and that we were doing our absolute best to move the ball forward. Uh, so it is my pleasure to welcome everyone to Brightwood, one of War Force's beautiful neighborhoods, uh, which, as we can see, continues to grow and attract new investment and activity. And today we celebrate just the latest example of Brightwood's and Upper Georgia Avenue's revitalization, the long-awaited Beacon Center. I've been pleased to support this project since my days uh, as a council staffer for then War Four council member and in my role now as the War Four council member. Uh, Mayor Bowser, you have been resolute in your 
your support uh, to this project. And you've made sure that everyone in our city's government uh, were just as resolute and focused. So thank you, Mayor, and thank you to your entire team for your focus and commitment uh, to make sure this project happened. Let's give the mayor a hand. Thank you. We have all eagerly awaited this opportunity to welcome the new Beacon Center, neighbors, and the vibrancy that this will bring to Upper Georgia Avenue. All of us, the District of Columbia, the community, faith and faith leaders alike, have all have long recognized the need for more affordable housing, more permanent supportive housing, and more commercial space, community space, and amenities for this section of our fabulous ward. We all knew that transforming this historic structure into a vision for the future would not be easy, and we all knew that it would take hard work, grit, determination, and a dream for what this center could mean for its residents and for this community here in Brightwood. And this building grew. So did our hopes and aspirations for the future of the District of Columbia, because today we don't just celebrate the building of a structure, we celebrate the building of community. A strong, resilient, and supportive community is a goal that requires all of us to work together, and we see the fruits of its labor here before us today. The old saying, patience is a virtue, could not be more true in this case. We waited patiently as this project moved forward, and now the Beacon Center will be a real virtue to this community. With 99 units of affordable and permanent supportive housing, units over 30,000 square feet of retail, commercial space, and almost 10,000 square feet of community and recreation space, this development will literally change the face of Upper Georgia Avenue. The Beacon Center represents the very best of what we can achieve when the government, the private, nonprofit partners, community associations, and the faith community all work together hand in hand. And I'm especially grateful for the historic Emory United Methodist Church led by Dr. Joe Daniels, their moral leadership, and their steadfast determination to practice what they preach has brought us to this remarkable day today. The Beacon Center represents yet another chapter in history of this church and this community, and I'm just thrilled that we are all able to celebrate this milestone together. Congratulations to everyone involved. I know that there will be more to come as this center will stand as a beacon for our ward and shine a light on the revitalization of Upper Georgia Avenue. And I know that you all stand with me when I say I'm Ward 4 proud this morning. Thank you.
commissioners, myself as the executive director of the DCHA, I thank you for letting us participate. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Todd Lee. I am the executive director of the District of Columbia Housing Finance Agency. Uh, and I just want to start by saying that this is a beautiful, beautiful day for a celebration. Yeah. I want to start by thanking Pastor Daniels and everybody because I know you prayed up the sun. Uh, so, um, you know, Councilmember Todd, uh, you know, hit, hit it out the park in, in terms of, you know, Ward 4 crowd. Um, I'm a Ward 4 resident and I got the opportunity, uh, myself and my family, to watch. Uh, you know, this grand, you know, blessing come out of the ground, be topped off and finally completed. Uh, residents moved in and, and it is just, it was an awesome, awesome thing to uh, behold over time. Um, talking about the body um, and the Emory body in particular, it really does remind me of what it takes uh, in order to get something like this accomplished. Um, just like it takes every single member working uh, to advance this ministry. It takes a bunch of folks coordinating, going in the same uh, direction in order to bring something like this to pass. You know, just thinking through from, you know, inception, it, it, it takes a leader, you know, a visionary, someone to actually come up with a plan and to get that ball rolling. Thank you once again, you know, Pastor Daniels. It takes financing. It takes planning. Uh, it takes the architects, the engineers, the general contractors, uh, the community, uh, et cetera, to, to really pull pull something uh, this size and, and something that's gonna have this type of impact off. Uh, and then, then I drill down. It, it takes a part of a body in order to get it done. And, and by that I'm talking about the financing, you know, which I know the most about with respect to this project. Um, you know, it, it takes Wall Street who purchased our bonds, institutional investors who bought, you know, all of the tax credits, you know, nonprofit investors as well as our government, uh, which really provided the linchpin um, to, to getting this done. You know, as a, as a long-term financier, I know how complicated, you know, some of these deals can be. Uh, most of them that have this type of impact, you know, have a gap, and our government is committed in providing the funding necessary to fill those gaps. And so, I actually want to thank Mayor Bowser at this juncture for her commitment to continue to provide, to provide the funding necessary uh, for us to have a housing production trust fund to bring deals like the Beacon Center, um, you know, to, 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 to fruition. Um, and then I want to go on and then drill down a little bit further. Um, you know, our, our staff is like the hand, you know, of this body. Um, it, 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 there's many pieces, there's a thumb, there's a palm, there's fingers. Um, it takes uh, a bunch of folks and functions inside of our organization in order to bring the bond and credit financing uh, that it takes to finance deals like this. And so I want to thank um, the vast majority of the DCHFA team is back there in the corner. I want to thank you for your commitment to the work that you do every day and what you did here at Beacon Center uh, in particular. Uh, thank you very much and um, looking forward to cutting the ribbon. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Holly Donaldson. I'm director of the Department of Housing and Community Development. Delighted to serve in Mayor Bowser's cabinet and to be part of the housing team that uh, is helping to make affordable ha housing happen across the district. But I actually come here first as a, a woman of faith who got involved in housing 30 years ago through my church. Uh, and who I know we had conversations, Reverend Daniels, when I was working with a nonprofit that was faith based on the Ford View project, the Ford Apartments right across the park here. And I used to, we used to see each other. We were neighbors. And we were trying to figure out how we were going to all be able to get our projects done and all of that. And I'm just, this is such a great day to be able to celebrate with you, Reverend. Thank you. Thank you. You know, um, like I said, I so I feel like I'm one of you that's been sitting there saying, oh my gosh, how long is this, and, and what is it going to take to get, and what's going to be the next hurdle, and what's it going to take, and all I can say is, you don't know how great it is to be able to, 
to work at an agency that is actually helping you make that happen. And that's what DHCD is doing. And I will say that the without the investments that Mayor Bowser has made, she doubled down from day one in office to double the Housing Production Trust Fund to $100 million each yeah. year. I can tell you that this is unprecedented nationally. We, we invest more in our housing trust fund than any other municipality per capita across the United States. We are leading, our mayor is leading. She is actually now leading nationally as head of the National League of Cities Housing Task Force preparing recommendations for a national and federal policy agenda for how we must work to solve the affordable housing crisis across the United States. But it starts, it starts right here in Washington, D.C. With the investments that we have made, we put 17, over $17 million into this. That money, the finance people will tell you, uh, Todd Lee just told you, that without that, without that government gap financing, projects like these don't reach the end zone, don't reach the finish line. And that is why I'm just delighted to be able to be here today, to not just say we did it, but to know we can do more. And we will be doing more. And yes, no, that's exactly right, we must do more. Because for all of the wonderful residents that will be living here, the seniors, the homeless, those who um, have want to be in this community, want to live and thrive in the Georgia Avenue Quarter, in Brightwood, we know we need to do more all across the city and that every ward must participate and must work like you did, from community, from using your own assets, your own resources, leveraging them, figuring out how can we better serve our community. Um, that's how I come to uh, approach all the work we do in housing, and I look forward to continuing to work with you all. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Wayne Boyle. Good morning. Uh, my name is Wayne Boyle. I'm with the United Development Fund, UMDF, and uh, I'm so honored and privileged um, to be here with you to celebrate with you all. Um, this uh, opening of uh, Beacon uh, of the Light. Beacon. <clears throat> the UMDF is actually celebrating its 50th anniversary as well. And we've done thousands and thousands of loans. And I think of all the loans that we've done, this is probably the most complicated and difficult loan. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the time has come. God's time. ribbon and open this facility up and start transforming lives. Everyone needs safe, decent, stable housing. We supply some of that here at Beacon, Emory Beacon of Light now. Some of our vulnerable need supportive housing community space and you also supply that here as well now. Emory Beacon of Light has been aptly named um, and it's very apparent. Emory, em Emory Beacon of Hope um, will provide hope for generations to come. Um, I, you know, there's tons of people to thank, um, but I've pers had the personal privilege to work with uh, Reverend Daniels and Hazel. Reverend Daniels, I heard his vision, he sold his heart and vision to myself and to our board. Um, and Hazel worked tirelessly. Uh, Thanksgiving, I don't know how she managed to, you know, do Thanksgiving and uh, email us back and forth. <laughs> and he Mother's Day. So, uh, um, thank you all, and again, we're uh, very happy and proud and, and privileged to be part of this uh, amazing uh, year. Thank you. Amen. Amen. This truly is the day yeah. that the Lord has made. And we are rejoicing, and we are glad to be here. servant leader of the Baltimore Washington Conference. This is a day birthed in the heart of a servant leader who understood that when Christ views the landscape of the beloved community, his analytical analysis will be based on whatever you've done to the least of these brothers and sisters of mine that you have done unto me. This is a day nurtured in patience.
patience, persistence, and prayer, understanding that we are the hands and feet of Christ in a world too consumed with wealth, power, and privilege, and too often bereft of concern for those looking for a hand up, not a hand out. This is a day envisioned by the rhetorician we love to quote, but very rarely seek to embody as he gave his Nobel Peace Prize speech. Dr. Martin Luther King stated, God never intended for one group of people to live in superfluous, inordinate wealth, while others live in abject, deadening poverty. He also said, there is nothing new about poverty. What is new, however, is that we have the resources to get rid of it. This is a day that bears the fruit of partners who came together hand in hand and heart and heart yeah. to help America make good on the check she wrote at the founding of this oh, nation. Oh, oh, oh. The check that Dr. King articulated had too often come back and marked insufficient funds. Well, today, here on Georgia Avenue, this beacon of light shines brightly, and the dream of this fellowship has not come back insufficient, but has become a reality. Oh, United Methodist Church would not fall prey to the nimby cry of so many other communities. Communities who claim they care in public, but in private, they not in my backyard. This is a day that stands as a primer on discipleship, leadership, and partnership. This triad of faith transform the aspirational into the practical and creates a new kind of church which offers blessings for all. This is a day when a servant leader in the form of Mayor Bowser is not using her platform to rape and pillage and take away from the community, but to pour into them and up a community.
of serving the best congregation. <laughs> Yeah. and this city 
who were being displaced yes, because sir. of the rising cost of living oh, in D.C. Yes, sir. This is a culmination yes. and it's a celebration yes, sir. of a vision that was then shared and embraced and supported and lifted up by private industry leaders, political and government officials, our mayor, denominational officials, and funders. And all because we came around a vision. Uh, we're told that without a vision, people perish. Because we came around a vision that God started some 200 plus years ago on land from which a president of the United States and the federal government would evict that same poor free black woman in 1861, put her furniture under a tree and render her homeless in order to build a federal fort. We can now rejoice in the fact that that vision was not lost, but that vision was found in the church and the private sector and the government sector had the audacity to partner together and pool its common assets together. Look what happens when the private sector and the public sector and the government sector and the church come together with common assets. Marvelous things. Powerful things. Profound things. Outrageous things. Like a 99-unit affordable housing commercial community and congregational development project called the Beacon Center that is already blessing people can come to pass. We stand in a place. We stand in a place where you will see families cry because they are not being displaced from this city but now have a safe, affordable place to live. You are in a place where you can watch young people wave to you from the windows of their living rooms with smiles, and you can see children dance up and down the hallways because they have finally a place that they can call home with so much joy. You will see a place where you can witness a congregation whose sacrifice and sharing of its land and its space, its four and a half year sojourn of worshiping in a school and learning in a deeper way what it means to be church and how to do church when you have no building has not gone in vain. where a city can rejoice because more affordable housing units are being offered to the very people who make up the infrastructure of this city but struggle to afford to live in the city where they work. To God be the glory for the great things that God has done. Today is a culmination and celebration of this phase of a vision. But for us, it's the commencement of a new phase. Yes, sir. yes for us at Emory, through Emory and beyond, it's the commencement of a fresh external fundraising campaign to invite those of you who are inclined to support this legacy that we seek to expand. There are still key areas of the Beacon Center that the Emory Fellowship and the Emory Beacon of Light still need to fund so that the legacy being built here can continue in broad, life-transforming ways. We did not sell our property to big-time developers selling away our vision.
She has been a champion of affordable housing. She means what she says and indeed says what she means. I thank God to introduce to you the mayor of the District of Columbia, the Honorable Muriel Bowser. church 
was bigger than its four walls. Yeah. And that it had to go out into the community. <laughs>
the design team, the, the design and construction teams, oh God. We thank you, O oh Lord, for our interfaith brothers and sisters. We thank you, O oh God, for those who house us, Brightwood School, Bridges Academy. We thank you, O oh God, for everyone who prayed, O oh God, and who blessed us along the way. We thank you, O oh God, for our city government. We thank you for our mayor, our city council member, and the entire D.C. government, all of the agencies that had a hand in this project. We thank you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for our supporters, not just in the United Methodist Church, O oh God, but all other public and private sector partners, O oh God, yeah. who helped to make this yeah. project possible. And most of all, God, we thank you for the Emory Congregation. Yeah. And we just ask that you bless the circle that surrounds circle. the Beacon Center, O oh God. Oh, yeah. We thank you, O oh God, for the Jesus who is the center of our joy, yeah. the Jesus who taught us how to love, the Jesus who taught us about compassion, yes. the Jesus who taught us about long suffering, yes. the Jesus who taught us how to be kind yes. to one another, yes. the Jesus who taught us how to forgive yes. one another. Yes. We thank you for that Jesus. Yes. We thank you for that Jesus who gave us the light to shine from this beacon center, oh God. Yes. And when others see the pathway to the beacon center, oh Lord, may they find hope here. Yes. May they find wholeness here. Yes. Rest, restoration, reinvigoration, yes. oh God. Revival, renewal. Yes. And for those that reside with us, oh God, yes. when they come home, may they find peace yes. and tranquility, yes. oh God. We want to bear witness to God's love. And we want others to see us in action, oh Lord. Yes. See our faith in action daily. We just thank you, O oh God. We bless you. We thank you. We ask that you bless all that we've done so far. The journey has not been easy, but it has been so worth it. And we thank you for it, O oh God. And as we move forward and others ask us about this Lord we serve and what does he require of us? He wants us to act justly. He wants us to love mercy and to walk humbly with us. So bless us in our coming and our going, God. We ask that everything that happens on this day, that you are anointed, consecrated, and be with us henceforth and forevermore. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Who are part of 